Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. Okay, in this video, what I wanna do is talk about how you analyze your photos when you come back from a trip. And you know, you get back from a trip, you load them into Lightroom, you're dead excited, you look at them, and you maybe find some bad ones. And there's some tips I can give you that will really help you improve your photography by analyzing those photos and understanding why they haven't worked and maybe why they've worked as well. But the first thing I want to talk about is a good photo. What is a good photo? And, and I think, certainly with social media, uh, there's a lot of emphasis on getting likes on social media, on getting some really good feedback. Everybody likes that pat on the back, it's fantastic. But in my opinion, the only thing that makes a photo good is if you like it. So if you want to put it on your wall, that is the best. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks, that's the best sort of measure of whether a photo is good or not. And, you know, we really should be doing photography for ourselves and not worry too much about what other people think. However, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you can get other people's input as well to improve your own photos. So I've got quite a lot of tips in this, so I'm gonna get straight into it. So the first thing that I do when I've got some photos that I like um, and some photos that I don't like is I get the photos I don't like, like this photo here. So this was um, a photo on my Scotland trip. I'll just put it on top of my iPad here. And I annotate them. So actually, first of all, I stick them on my wall, but then I, I get them down off these bits of paper and I just annotate them. Sometimes I do it on my iPad as well. So in this one, um, you know, I said these rocks are, are too boring. This blank area isn't great. Um, not making use of this amazing light. There's probably a better shot here. And I sort of live with that a little bit and I look at it and it, it really helps me to just sort of gather my thoughts and then put them down on these photos. And I'll, I'll, come, I'll come back to that in, in a minute and talk to you a little bit more. I'm gonna actually look at a photo that didn't work and, and we, can, we can go through it so you can see my thoughts as I do that. But before I do that, I just wanna talk a little bit about um, composition and the things that we'll, we'll talk about. So I think there are probably five things that you can look for um, in, in your photo that are, are really simple. And I talk about these in my Master in the Art of Photography, a link here, and, and they are balance, flow, attention, simplicity, and distractions. So it's probably easier if I could just show you some photos and show you how I maybe look at my photos and see if I can look at those particular five points and maybe annotate my photos. So I'll do it on my iPad so it's easier for you to see. And then I'll get onto a, what I think is even more important than looking at your bad photos. So this was an image where the, the, I should have got all the components right and actually in the following image I did, but this one, I was just getting so excited by the light. You can see the light's pretty amazing. I arrived, this was the first place I arrived in Scotland. Um, I'd driven a long way and I probably just wanted to take a photo. So I got my camera out and, and took this. And when I looked at it, my camera, I, I was absolutely sure that this was gonna be a really amazing shot. But then when I looked at it in Lightroom, and I, I left it a couple of weeks before I started to look at my photos, so I detached myself from the, the, the um, the, the, the mood that I had when I came back from, from the location. So, you know, if, if I find that a, a photo doesn't bring back that mood, then I don't think it's particularly great. And this one sort of, sort of did, but then fell down. So one of the big problems is I've got the rock here and then I've got this big, um, this big open space here. Those two things don't balance each, each other off very much. So, it's, it's a little bit uneven because I've got all these things on this side here and then not a lot on this side. So the balance of the image isn't quite, isn't quite right. And then I don't know why they didn't notice this, but here I've got a big bridge. So there's a bridge here, which I don't know why I didn't notice that, but you know, it was just looking at the edges of the frame. I should have looked around the frame before I took the shot and then I would have got that right. Okay, so I wanna now look at this shot here. Um, so this is uh, an, an image I also took in Scotland um, and I was really trying to get these leaves that looked absolutely fantastic and these old silver birch. So if I just go in and we'll just go into markup and you know, 
it's interesting this because on my masterclass Facebook group, I posted this image and got everybody's feedback for, for what they thought. And it's a good idea sometimes to get other people's feedback, but then you've got to sort of then treat it a little bit with care because you've got to think what, what what was your vision with the image. If you just take everybody's feedback, then everyone's going to have something different and you'll end up with nothing. Um, but one of the things that you know everyone was was really correct about was this branch here obviously and it's sort of leading your eye out of the image and that's important from a point of view of flow so what you really want is a flow through the image so your eye is sort of staying within the image but this is taking my eye right out of the image and that doesn't work very well and then the other thing with this image is that there's no real resting place for your eye so there's no place for your eye to go I'd have originally thought that this tree was going to work but this tree is just not significant enough. So even though the colours are nice, the leaves are nice, the arrangement of these um, trunks is just not working to create uh, a flow through this image correctly and, and that's you know not great. Okay so if we look at this this image now, um, so this was an image that um, we took actually at the side of the road, uh, we'd seen this light hitting these mountains here and we thought wow that looks amazing so we wanted to grab this shot and um, it obviously doesn't work you can you can see straight away what what's wrong with it so I'll go in and again edit it and we'll just mark it up so the big problem is this tree here so it looks really nice here that's really nice because it's against um, a background this is really nice the clouds are really nice but the problem is that down here, th there's a distraction here because there's, you know, you, your eye sort of goes down here and can't quite understand that that tree's there. And then there's another distraction here that this tree is sort of going over the background and you can't define it as a tree. Now, if it had got lower down and this tree had been further sort of up and, and sticking into the sky here, I think that might have worked a little bit better. I'd have got rid of all this area of water here because it had gone over it. Um, and I think it would have been a simpler image. So that's two of the things that you need to look at, which is simplicity and distractions. So by looking at the images and trying to understand why they don't work, it helps you not make those mistakes, you know, when, when you're in the field, um, which, is, which is really, really important. Pebbles, what's wrong? <laughs> Say hello. No? Okay, you go and see what's going on then. Right, so the other thing to look at is light in your image and timing in your image and just to you know make sure why has it gone wrong. It might be that you've got the most amazing light but you've not thought about the composition or it might be that you've got an amazing composition, composition but the light just wasn't right. And to, under, to try and understand that's really, really important because quite often you'll look at an image and you'll think that should work because the light's amazing. I've got all these light rays coming down but you've just not got the composition right. So, okay, on to the more important thing, which you might not think is more important, but I believe it is more important, and that is trying to understand what makes an image good. So when you find images that you really love, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks, what you really enjoy, what you want to put on your wall, then really think about why you enjoy those, what makes those special, and, and try and maybe explain that to somebody else or annotate it. So, for instance, if you take a look at this image, this is an image that I really, really like. I, I, I love this image. It's a type of image that I really like to take. Um, but what I did was I, I tried to explain to myself why I really like this image. And I think that um, there's, a, there's a few things that, that really help it. So this house is, is really important because I think it gives an idea of scale. Um, so you, you, know, you immediately think, wow, look at this domineering mountain and I, I've done that a few times in my images um, and, and I really like that. I like the way the light's hitting this and then um, there's a shadow there and that this mountain's in shadow and this one's just catching the light. I like the colours of it, I like the blue and the orange tones of it. Um, but, but what's really important for me is the simplicity of it. I think you know that's something that comes across all the time in when I look at my photos and think what what do I really like about that photo and that's simplicity now might that might not be the same for everybody but for me I really really like that simplicity and this is one of the reasons that I love this photo and um, 
If I go back to a couple of other photos from, from a long time ago, actually in Scotland as well, um, one of them is this one. Again, I think, you know, the reason I like this image is just the simplicity of it. But then I thought, well, what else is it about this image that I like? You know, why is it that this image always stands out? Why is this an image that people buy? Um, and, and, you know, what, what, what is it about this image? And I think in this particular one, and, and this is true for another one that I'll show you in a minute, it's just the color balance. So it's the oranges and blues. Again, there's simple sim simplicity. Now there's a really nice texture to this bottom that sort of when I first took it reflects the mountains in the background. But I think what's really, really good about this image is this blue and orange. And then if I show you um, a shot, which is one of my favorites, then which is this one here, then again, it's a very simplistic color palette and that the, there's quite a lot of repeating patterns in here. So everything's quite well balanced, you know, that th these triangles and these triangles work together. And I really spent quite a long time thinking about this and then labeling it all the things on these images that I thought were really, really important. And I'll just show you those now. You may be saying to yourself, but why, why is it gonna help if I, if I just understand what makes my good photos good? Surely I need to work out what, what, what makes my bad photos bad. But it is really, really important. It was interesting, I was listening to a, a, a podcast of what Clive Woodward would do. There was a lot of woods then. <laughs> what Clive Woodward would do when he uh, was trying to improve the England rugby team to eventually win the World Cup. And um, he analysed their games. Now, the fact was that all the games that he was analysing, I think something like 92% of them, they'd won. And what he wanted to do was find out why they'd won. What were the things that they were doing in those rugby matches that were making them win? And then just do more of it. And, and that's what you need to do in your photography, really. If you can find out what it is that's making that photo really, really good. You know, is it the light? Is it just simplicity? Is it the colour tones? Is it balance? You know, it's probably a lot of those put together, but what is it that, that's really, those good shots that you've got, that's, you can talk to somebody else and say, this is what I think makes this photo good. Now, that talking to something else, somebody else is really, really important, I think. I don't think um, you should necessarily listen to everything that people say back to you, <laughs> um, but I think you should take on board what people say about your photos as well. So if somebody says, oh, I love that because X, Y, and Z, um, then you can probably think, ah, I didn't think about that. Or they, or they could look at a bad photo of yours and say, actually, the, the reason I don't think that works is because that rock is just a little bit too dominant, or there's a there's a space on the right hand side that maybe you thought was negative space, but it's just leading my eye and my eye draws out of the image. It really can improve your photography. So if you haven't got a group of folk, people like that, try and get one, but just be careful because not everybody's right. And it's at, at the end of the day, it's what makes you happy and, and nobody else really, really do, do, does matter. So before I go, just what I wanna do is just show you some photos. I've just added these photos as a massive thanks from me to everyone for just supporting my channel really. I've tried to do the prints as cheap as I can. So these are not my main portfolio prints, but the prints that I really, really love, um, that are taken um, in the last year, that they're, they're, and, and they're all the same size, A3, all printed on the same um, paper as my, all my portfolio prints. I'll sign them, I'll number them. They'll come in the same portfolio box with a certificate of authenticity. Because I realized that some of my prints are expensive and not everybody can afford those. So I tried to do these um, cheaper so that they're 
£49 plus post and package packaging. If you order one now, you'll get it before Christmas and it's just gonna be that offer until the end of Monday. So you've got two days um, if you want to order one of these. And I did put it out in my email newsletter as well. So I, and I, I've got a limit of 50 because I, I, it takes a lot of my time to package them and print them. Um, you know, to do those 50 is gonna take me probably a week. So I, I, I didn't want to just overdo it and then have too much. Okay, enough nattering on, let's have a look at the photos. So this is one I took a little bit later that I just showed you from um, Rannick Moore. I love this this photo, it's really, really great. It was, the sunset was just um, setting, the clouds looked amazing and I love these reeds down here. So that's one, one of the photos. Um, and there's this photo here, which you probably remember from a video where it was really rainy. Um, just don't, just put that there. Um, so this is early autumn, so it's called a glimpse of autumn with these silver birches. I love this sort of fern, but the other ferns are changing colour. And I've just got all the trees aligned quite nicely, so I really like that image. Um, there's this one here which is this amazing light that I got in the Lake District. I, I just I love this shot, and in fact, now I've been printing it, um, I think I'm going to I'm going to put this on my wall as well because I really, really like this. It looks fantastic. The greens and the and the yellows here just look really, really nice, um, and your eye just sort of wanders through the image. I like that. Um, I've got this one here, which is from the Faroe Islands, um, which is actually. I went to this, I've been to this location quite a lot. I've had some amazing light there, but I like this one more than the other ones because it, it sort of represents the Faroe Islands a lot better. It's sort of quite overcast, um, it's quite flat light, but it, it, it really works. I really like all the angles, the diagonals in it, and the, this seaweed just draws your eye through. There's really good flow through the image on this, on this image. So there's that one there. And then finally, there's this one, the spider reeds, as somebody called them, which I thought was a good name. So this is um, the final one, uh, which is a bit of an abstract shot, a bit different for me, but I really like it. The colors look great, and this looks amazing printed. In fact, they all look amazing printed. They're printed on Photospeed NST bright white paper, which is quite a thick, slightly textured paper, which looks really good. And, um, yeah, if, if, if you want one, that, that'd be great. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll get that out to you before Christmas. Okay, thanks ever so much for watching this week. And until next Sunday, bye.